Evening and welcome to a very special match day live courtesy of Cardiff City TV. Cardiff City women against Abergavenny women at Cardiff City Stadium under the lights in front of over 5,000 spectators. John Donovan along with Noah Bushby this evening. And uh, Noah, we've been talking about this one for a while. It's going to be special, isn't it? Oh, it's going to be so special. We, um, we just can't wait. We've been speaking about it for... Yeah, a very long time. Uh, yeah, it's been in the in the planning, in the making for a long time, and to finally be here, it's, it's so exciting. Over 5,000 people, just what an occasion. Um, and yeah, over 5,000 people to think of where we come from over the last few years um, through COVID, and you know I've been here four years now, and to have 5,000 people in the stadium is just incredible. So. Yeah, over the moon, and I just hope it's a it's a exciting game and a and a you know a good game for all the fans to watch. We expect it will be Cardiff City, of course, coming off the back of that fantastic derby win against Cardiff Met on Sunday, three-one. If you didn't join us, if you didn't join us, why not? Get down there, certainly. Don't forget uh, after this game, every home game at Cardiff International Sports Stadium, free of charge, and the football is fantastic. So Cardiff City this evening lining up unchanged from the team that beat Cardiff Met on Sunday. Some familiar faces in there. Those of you who are uh, perhaps tuning in for the first time, look out for uh, Fionn Price with the fantastic set-piece delivery. Siobhan Walsh will run through a brick wall for Cardiff City. Uh, Dan Broadhurst, who's uh, an advanced midfielder, always nips in with a goal. Um, and uh, Lily Billingham was fantastic as well on the weekend, setting up a couple of goals for Rianne Oakley, the signing in the summer from Swansea City. Saw the light, joined Cardiff City, and what an impact she has made netting in almost every game we've covered so far this season. Those are the Bluebirds playing in a wing-back formation under manager Ian Derbyshire. Both teams just in a huddle at the moment for Abergavenny. Well, they are bottom of the table at the moment, but they are improving. Uh, and this league is very quickly improving as a whole. There are no easy games in this one. And uh, some names, Noah, you were pointing out for me before the start for Abergavenny, familiar to Cardiff City that have been perhaps in the youth setup, played some games for the senior side. So uh, whilst they might be bottom of the table on a big occasion like this, no easy game. Yeah, no easy game, and yeah, with that Abergavenny team, you've got a couple of players that we've had in the past with our first team. You've got, you know, Charlotte in goal, Charlotte Hastings, and then you've got um, Alana Murphy up front, who played plenty of games for us up front, uh, played for a few years for us, and scored plenty of goals. So, yeah, we we definitely know a lot of. Wow, look at that! Listen to that! Incredible. Um, yeah, we, we know a lot of their players and um, we know that despite them being bottom of the league, they, they'll put up a big challenge and especially on an occasion like this, they'll come prepared and they'll come set up and we'll see how they play, but I'm sure they'll come to frustrate us. Yeah, we got the inside knowledge from uh, Mike Thomas on Sunday. They ran Swansea City close for around about 45 minutes in one of their last encounters. Cardiff will kick off uh, attacking the Grange end, playing from left to right, of course in the all-blue. Abergavenny in the all red. When we get a chance, we will talk to Noah about the fantastic work that's happening below this senior women's team. Noah, of course, the manager of the under 19 side. We will come to that, but we're underway in this one with Cardiff playing out from the back. The Bluebirds will look to make the pitch very, very big. Dan Green has been a revelation since moving to wing back this year. And this is her on the ball now, driving infield, keeps going. Good tackle on the edge of the area. Green will recover and get it back, though. Didn't release the ball quite quickly enough, and Abergavenny did have possession momentarily, but Price nips it off Eliza Atkins. Good battle in the middle of the field. That's Williams who put Green under pressure. First touch now for Broadhurst. Just feel the excitement amongst the crowd and what's great what's noticeable Noah a lot of young voices you can hear a lot of young voices yeah we did the deal 100 tickets for 100 pounds and that seems to have you know a lot of people have put money into that and it's been amazing to see and you can see and hear all the all the schools that have been donated tickets and things like that is yeah it's really really nice to see and hopefully 
this group of players are inspiring that next generation. The, the school kids that are here will be inspired from this and hopefully more attendances throughout the season now. But yeah, it's just about that, you know, inspiring people. And, and I think they're definitely doing that. I think they certainly are. Abergavenny playing out from the back. Interesting to see that Abergavenny matching up against the Bluebirds in terms of formation. Three set and a half, wing backs, a couple of holding midfielders, one more advanced then, and then uh, a front two for Abergavenny. But expect Cardiff City to have most of the ball. Gone, Nora, I gave it the big ball up a few moments ago. And talking about inspiring the next generation, you're uh, looking after the next generation at the moment. How are the under 19s doing? Yeah, really well. We've had a very similar start to the season as the as the first team. I think the first team have won seven from eight and drawn one, and we've won six from seven and drawn one. Um, so, yeah, really well. Uh, big shout out to the 16s as well, who I was in charge of last season. They're doing really well. Uh, winning, you know, in the league. They've won every game as well so far this season. So, yeah, the, the next generation in our club, I know it's under 16s up, but the next generation in our club is doing really well as well so it's, it's really good to see and, and you'll see a few of our under 19s players make an appearance today one of them on the ball now Lily um, so yeah a couple on the bench and, and Lily starting it's really good to see she was uh, excellent on Sunday in the first half with the ball setting up a couple of goals in the second half without the ball really matured as a player Lily Billingham the number 18 in the 12 months I've been watching it as has this team as a whole Look out, though, for the searing pace of number seven, Rianne Oakley. Hardly looks like she's moving at times. <laughs> then she just turns on the afterburners. No, and, I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure Mike said on commentary about her running style because she, <laughs> she doesn't look like she moves. She, she just... You see some players really put all, their all into sprinting and she looks like she's she you know, glides. jogging. She glides. <laughs> but all of a sudden, she's gone. And we've only started well. They're putting pressure on Cardiff, not allowing them easy possession. That's a lovely use of the body and turn away there from Phoebe Poole. And now she can drive to the right-hand side of the box. Early ball. Can Oakley get there? She can. Gets the touch. Scores the goal! Early marker for Cardiff City. Beautiful cross by Phoebe Poole. Did ever so well. Used her body to turn the defender. Then an early cross to Oakley, who used that speed to get ahead of her marker. Got a little touch on it. And what a perfect start, Noah. Perfect start. I was just about to say about the crowd and getting used to the noise they're making as you're going forwards. We've seen a couple of times, a couple of loose touches, but I'll tell you what, Phoebe does unbelievably well with her body on the wing there. And great ball across, fantastic ball across, and Ree can just tap home. But yeah, really good build-up. I, I've spoken to Ian a lot about sometimes it's good to play all these intricate passes, but as soon as they press, if you want to play over that press, yep. play over it get your strikers to use their body well and Phoebe did that superbly then and Re could just finish so yeah really good start and the noise again like I said at the start of the game the noise there um, when we scored is, is something that we all need to get used to I think not sure if senior men's manager Mark Hudson is here tonight but maybe a January move for Rianne Oakley who knows <laughs> good movement again from Phoebe Poole opening up that pitch but on this occasion Holly Smith decides better of it. That's okay. Cardiff changed the angle of attack. Here's Hannah Power. Always dependable. Nice ball into Poole, who started well. So I do call Hannah Power Hannah Daly occasionally. Forgive me. She got married in the summer, and it's still getting used to rolling off the tongue. Don't worry. I still do the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I was going to say, it's, in, it's good to see this high up and, and where the cameras are, how big we actually make the pitch. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're at the uh, at the Athletic Stadium, you see from a bit lower down, and you do see us play some good football. But from up here, you really see we're making it really, really wide, playing some good passes. And at the moment, Abergavenny is struggling to deal with the spaces that we're finding, especially in midfield. And it opens those channels for Phoebe Poole and Rianne Oakley. We're going to talk about her speed all night by making the pitch big. You, you, you opening up channels, you know, in in the more central areas. Yeah, definitely, and and that. As you mentioned earlier about their midfield three, I'd be surprised if they don't change it. Um, they've set up matching our midfield. They've gone two against our two centre midfielders and then an attacker midfielder against our um, holding midfielder against Seren. And so it looks that those gaps are opening because they're set up like that. If they drop that attacker midfielder mm -hmm. back a little bit, the gaps won't be there as much. So I'm surprised they've set up like that. 
Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if they change it. We'll keep an eye on that. Cardiff playing out from the back. His power into Siobhan Walsh, who really does have kryptonite running through her veins. The 12 months <laughs> yes. I've been watching, Shield hasn't lost the tackle yet. And every time she takes an injury, she just bounces straight back up. Here's Holly Smith, a youngster, but a very good player and part of that fantastic back three. Oakley, the goal scorer, turns it wide to Green. Again, Cardiff making the pitch big. Green goes on the outside. Nice little stutter step. Good ball across. And I think the ball was just slightly behind Broadhurst, trying to glance it in. Couldn't quite get the contact she wanted, but uh, fantastic transition play for the Bluebirds there. Yeah, we can. We know we have the pace down the wings and, and Rhea and Greeny down that left-hand side there. <laughs> Dangerous players. Greeny loving playing on the left at the moment. She swapped sides in the last few weeks, her and Fionn, and, and she's really thriving off it, really. She can go on either foot, and it's, it's really benefiting us. The way she goes down the line and just fizzes the ball across with her left foot, almost creating a goal there, but that's what she does. And she's really good at it. I know when you play junior football like I did, the, the most improved player was kind of much maligned. It's probably not the right title for that, but the, the, the way she's made that transition to left wing back, one of the stories of the season. I completely agree. Yeah, uh, uh, and yeah, much improved growing up was, yeah, like you say, a, a, an award that you think, ah, oh, but I completely agree. From going from a winger to a wing back, is, it, it is a big change. And... When you change system like this, players are going to have to do that, and it's how they adapt to that. And Greeny's one of the really good examples of how you be professional and make one of those changes. We, we've done the same with the 19s. We've had to change some wingers to wing backs and different different sorts of things like that. Full backs to centre backs because we don't exactly play with right or left backs. So, yeah, it's just changes like that, and you've got to be professional about it. You've got to adapt in a good way, and Greeny's done that superbly as well. Decent effort a moment ago by Eliza Atkins. Just picking up a, a loose ball from Lily Billingham. So, Abergavenny showing there is some threat there. And uh, if you are joining us from a, an Abergen Abergavenny persuasion, you're very welcome. We will try and be as neutral as possible, of course. It's a great occasion for both uh, teams. And fans still coming into Cardiff City Stadium, which is great to see on what is a horrible night in the capital. Ball into the channel. And there's that open space again. Nice ball from Smith to find Oakley. Green makes the inside run. Oakley uses it as a decoy. Will drive across the box. Just inviting defenders to have a little nibble. In fact, Abergavenny did quite well there not to dive into any tackles. Green with a crossing opportunity to the far post. Not a bad ball. In fact, it's a great ball. I didn't think Poole was going to reach that. But she elevated herself. Fantastic header. And with nine minutes gone, Cardiff City have a 2-0 lead. Phoebe Poole is in on the act. Well, what a start. What a start. Um, talk about rise to the occasion nine minutes in two nil up what a start and we were just talking about dan green on the left how she can take it down the line but that's the other positive she's right footed she works so hard at that left foot but she cuts back onto her right that time taking the defender she's gone down the left she's gone back to down to her right now on two different occasions and that time perfect cross really good header from phoebe kind of turn the ball over quickly again Abergavenny have got to stem the tide in those channels between the wide centre half and the, the wing back and as Noah said maybe that just additional midfielder and a flat three might make life a little bit more difficult for the Bluebirds but a great start from Ian Derbyshire's team his power turning it back to Karen Chamberlain who may not see a lot of action tonight but she was excellent on Sunday against Cardiff Met making a couple of Great saves at important times. I think Ian Derbyshire forgave her giving away the penalty. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. But Kerrin, what a keeper. And what a story as well. Um, but just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I think she, some of the saves she makes, you should see, she, you should see training. If you think she's good in matches, it's because she's tested more and more in training. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's, it, oh, what a keeper um, and the girls absolutely love her she's just a, a really nice person really good character to have in the squad um, and what a keeper what a keeper Watkins turns out very nicely Sarah Watkins just keeps things ticking over as the holding midfielder great ball into Broadhurst he makes that oh. late run unfortunate the first touch was a little 
heavy as it skidded off the surface. That's an example of Theon Price and the delivery she can make, and Dan Broadhurst will make those runs all night. Yeah, she's she's done that all since I've joined, so four or five years. Since, but I'm, she's been playing a lot longer than that, and she's done that, I'm sure, her whole career. She those little third man runs they're called they're yep. into the box and they're hard to mark you saw against Cardiff Mets she scored doing that on Sunday um, they are really really hard to mark because you're adding that extra player to the attack and yeah she's really good at it and almost inches off scoring there Cardiff wanting to play at a tempo they get the ball moving again from that set piece nice layoff by Billingham the ball perhaps was on but Price decides to cut in field Cardiff go back to power. A little bit of a heavy first touch, which is going to invite a 50-50 tackle. It's a good tackle. The Abbott of any player is taking a knock, an impact injury, but very brave. Both players there. That first touch just got away from power on a, a loose surface. And I think it's Fionn Simmons down there. Brave tackle. Yeah, good to see Fionn playing for the first team, though. I, I know I said to you before we started that she played for the under-19s last season, and that's what you want from that under-19s league. You want to see players doesn't matter what team if they're if they're going on and playing first team football that's exactly what you want and it's good to see and that's a great tackle as well by the way but it's good to see Fionn playing first team football um, and you, they've got Meg Stanton on the bench as well and she was playing for the under 19s last year so that's exactly what you want you want to see that sort of stuff and from that under 19s league that's exactly why it's been set up so you, you can develop players into first team players so it's yeah really good to see who started the game well. Turns into a little bit of trouble there. Decent first touch from Alana Murphy, and that will win the throw-in for Abergavenny, who just need to build themselves into the game. Rain continues to fall, but the noise does not uh, diminish at all, and the two goals, early goals, have certainly helped the enthusiasm. Sean Walsh makes that ball hers. I'll be saying that a lot tonight as Smith plays the ball into the channel once more. Broadhurst intelligently lets it go. That's a good call from Oakley, I would suspect. Now Oakley has the run into the area. Can she finish? She can! 3-0! Beautiful back-to-front goal. Holly Smith with the ball. But there's such an intelligent leave there from Broadhurst. I anticipate that Oakley made the call. And when Oakley is in those positions, uh, Noah, more often than not, there's only one, uh, one result there. Absolutely, you could see that. You could see it when we had the ball at the back. We sweeped it across, shuffled the ball across, and you could see that Abergavenny at the back were just a little bit too slow to, to react to the shuffle. And Ree had that huge gap, huge gap to run into. You could see it as we were about to play the pass, and you don't want to give Ree that much time and space. She's so quick, such a good finisher. Um, yeah, really good from Ree. It's really actually good. a really quality finish because she yeah. knows she's being closed down and she goes for the toke poke, but the, the, the deliberate toke poke to get that shot yeah. away quickly. No, sometimes you've got to use what you can to score. Um, and that's exactly what she's done. That's why she's such a good finisher and why she scores so many goals. Still not quite sure why Swansea were playing her as a wing back, but Swansea's lost his Cardiff game. That's a nice turn inside by Atkins, who's been the most dangerous player for Abergavenny so far. She's been forced across the box. Good running, but Cardiff regroup, lay back into the path of number seven, Kerry Hudson, decent strike but that's into the arms of Karen Chamberlain whose hands on a difficult slippy evening are good and she keeps the ball moving very quickly to Price but Eliza Atkins, the number 11 for Abergavenny, looks like the most likely for them we'll come back to that and come back to Noah in a moment because again the ball into the left hand attacking channel is causing the visitors so many problems here's Green, giving it to Oakley Oakley cuts back outside, a little isolated, puts the ball back into Green. Oh, I think Green didn't realise that ball was intended for her and she had time to pull it out of the air. But those two are having a lot of joy and a lot of fun out there. Dan Green, Rianne Oakley. We hope you have in, uh, a lot of fun tuning in. 3-0 to the Bluebirds. Only 15 minutes played. Crowd are loving it. Just to remind you, over 5,000 people here this evening. Highest attendance for a Welsh women's Premier League game. It's Cardiff get the free kick. And the women's game is, we say it every week, no, but it is going from strength to strength. Yeah, going from strength to strength. Um, you see, you know, we have a few Welsh internationals playing now for, for us. But you see some of the tackles flying in, you know, Fionn a few minutes ago. That physicality's coming along and, and some of the football we're playing 
Um, and, you know, you see it, it's such a competitive league now. Our draw this season was against Ponte. Um, and Ponte have, you know, played some, well, played really well that game and, and, and played, got some really decent results. Um, and, you know, at the start of the season, they were battling mid-table. Um, and so you, it's such a competitive league now. Um, and it's amazing to see, amazing to see. And the, and the game is just growing and growing, going from strength to strength, as you say. And you can see that with the number of fans we have um, coming down tonight. You know, the Wales international team, I think they had 6,000 at one game and then 15,000 yep. the, at the next game. And it's just going from strength to strength. And it's so good to see that how much is growing. Um, and, you know, long may it continue now. Price. Great ball, blind ball, but knew where a runner was. It's going to come to Broaders, and Forshi just gets underneath it. Van Broaders is going to get a goal at some point tonight because she keeps making those runs. That's a great ball by Price. She just dropped it into an area where she knew Broaders would be. Yeah, you see people on Twitter say that some passes are only a passes only Fion Price could make, and I think that was one of those. She just knew if she gets it into one of the, into that area. With the amount of players pressing her, she's going to find a little gap somewhere. And sometimes you do get a bit fortunate, and I think that was one of those. But she does, she she does play some unbelievable passes. There's two now picked out um, down in the middle there. I saw some great social media earlier for and Price, a, a teacher, and I think her class were here to cheer her on a little earlier. And I also found out she visited Corpus Christi yesterday, and that's my old school. So, uh, yeah, uh, I particularly want Fion to do well tonight uh, for, for those two reasons. Yeah, the, the, the ticket sales, I mean, it's been incredible, and Fion has done really well with it. Hannah works at the same school as Fion as well. Um, and then, you know, Ian has just worked <laughs> tirelessly to get some ticket sales so um, so him and, and Paul Cox as well has, have worked tirelessly to get these tickets sold um, and you know huge congratulations to them and um, well props to them as well for how much work they put in for it absolutely is Billingham always busy nice first time ball from Broadhurst to find Oakley it's good recovery defending there from Caitlin Davis got herself back from the wrong side to the right side Oakley holds the ball up, gives it to Green, who gets the fortunate bounce, doesn't the second time, good tackle in the middle of the park. Abergavenny, despite being three goals down, they're competing. And uh, in number 11, Eliza Atkins, I do think they have a player who can trouble Cardiff City. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They have Eliza Atkins and they have Alana. Um, you know, up front, two very, very capable goal scorers. So if they get a chance, they'll score. And, and we've got a make sure you know we're three nil up but three goal leads if you concede one it could it could go away straight away so um, you just got to make sure that against players like that you don't give those chances you don't fall asleep you don't get sloppy which we're doing a good job of so far but we're only 19 minutes in so yeah, the intensity is still there great reverse play here's smith with the ball in and broadhurst again making that run not quite there but what you notice about Holly Smith as a centre-half, and all three centre-halves are comfortable with the ball at feet, but Holly Smith has a, a really good range of passing. She does, she does, and she's one of our Welsh players, plays for the Wales under-19 squad, um, and she's doing obviously really well with Wales, but has been a great addition for us. Um, signed last season, uh, and, you know, we're really happy to keep hold of her in the summer, and both feet, go on, Phoebes. That's Poole again, just uses her body so well, drew the defender in, shot a goal, beautiful individual goal, second of the night from Phoebe Poole, and that was pure class, the way she drew a defender into the throw-in and then turned the corner, let the ball and the bounce do the rest, still had a lot to do though Noah, but drove across goal, beautiful laces finish, and goalkeeper Charlotte Hastings had no chance with that one. Yeah, that's what Phoebe can do again that hold up play let the ball run and go on sprint onto it she knows she's got the pace does really well to cut in really good finish Phoebe's playing really really well it's, it's interesting that we're finding so much gaps I, I, I'm not sure um, you know uh, this, this the size of the pitch uh, it's the same size as the one across the road so I'm not sure where these where it's coming from but with you know rising to the occasion brilliantly and and 
another brilliant finish from Phoebe. So two for Phoebe, two for Ree. Maybe they're competing. <laughs> Who gets the hat-trick first? Cardiff to Noah's point, though. Just need to keep doing what they're doing. And they're enjoying it out there under the lights. And why shouldn't they? Price drives in field to Oakley. Price wanted the return. Oakley goes out wide to Green. Green doesn't link with Oakley on this occasion. But uh, you can hear the crowd once more. And if you want to sell a game to the next generation of female players, uh, a full goal lead after 20 minutes probably isn't a bad way to go about it. No, exactly. It's a perfect start, really, from us. And we're playing some really good football. Yeah, inspiring the next generation is exactly what you want to do. Um, and, you know, it's, it's so, so good to see how well we're playing. But the amount of kids that are here, it's just hopefully really showing them that they can do it. They can, you know, I, I was speaking to Seren um, last season, it was. And Seren said she didn't start playing football till she was 12. Mm -hmm. And now she's playing for Wales under 19. She's playing for us in midfield. Yep. Um, Seren Watkins, that is number eight, if you're, if you're watching. And it just shows they're not too young. Um, you know, 12, you're in high school and we have a lot of primary schools here today. So, um, yeah, really inspiring really from from all our players and all the of any players as well yes absolutely to, to go out and and perform play in front of nearly six thousand people is is incredible here's green again she's enjoying herself down the flight makes room for the cross great tackle good recovery tackle well in fact just enough pressure put on, i think there by caitlin davis that green sliced the cross but decent defending there by the right wing back of abgaveni yeah, she's done a, you know, that was just putting enough pressure on to stop the, um, to stop the chance, really. But she's done a couple of really good recovery tackles, um, Caitlin Davis. Yeah, done really well so far. Billingham wins that. Can she get onto the uh, second ball? She can't. Decent tackle. Now, because any look to build through midfield. Cardiff looked to press. There's Sarah Watkins, who's... An affectionate terms, just like a little Rottweiler out on the pitch. She closes <laughs> ground, and I promised Mike not to uh, to tell her, but she's my favourite player, uh, Noah. She does all the dirty work, I think. Yeah, uh, talented footballer, work. but does all the dirty work. Yeah, definitely. She just knows her position so well as well. Wants to, you know, wants to get on the ball, wants to express herself, but she's not afraid of any challenges and. You know, last season, if you go back to when we played Met in the final and against yep. um, Laura May, really, really tough game. Laura May's a really good player. Um, and she learned throughout the season. I'm sure Mike's probably mentioned it before, but she learned throughout the season. She First couple of games, she had to really work, a, work out how to play against her. And then by the end of it, Seren had a well scored yep. against Met in the final and played really really well really well good press again by Abergavenny by Simmons on that occasion they're, they're looking to close gaps and close space and uh, of course they won't want to be embarrassed tonight although I'm not sure it's an occasion where anyone could be embarrassed but they will want to make this competitive and they are working very hard although Billingham bursts through that tackle it's a flat line oh if Billingham could have just released that still a chance there is still a chance as she finds Price, but again, good recovery once more. Both wing backs playing well for Abgaveni, Simmons and Caitlin Davis sticking with their players. Billingham slips, but there's enough on that to get to Watkins, who gives it back to Billingham. Those two are kind of perpetual motion out there, they never stop. The movement is very, very good. As Watkins makes good the pitch ball. big once more, finding Holly Smith, and she can step forward, and we know she can pick a pass. There's Poole. First touch gets it out of her body and she plays it to power. Power will look for the cross. Broadhurst is there, flicks it on. Oh, Oakley couldn't quite read the flight of that. It goes past her and out for. I think she knew she was game. offside. Yes. I think she knew she was offside um, and was just hoping that Dan Green was running in behind her. But really good football. I think we went across side to side a couple of times, two or three times in that move then. Yeah, really good football that. Really good. And that ability to go both ways, you know, it, it, it's obviously paid dividends because you've scored four goals now, but you, you, you're tiring a team out as well just with that constant movement. We'll come back to that with Oakley now pressing again, wants to be the first of the hat-trick. Beats her player, puts it into Poole. Is this the moment for Poole? It's blocked. Half-hearted claims for handball, but it was a good block by 
Bennett. I must admit, my hand went up, but oh, it's, uh, it's almost a save. <laughs> <laughs> well, let her off though. She was in good position and uh, good uh, block there when Poole thought she had the hat trick. But it, it must be exhausting now because any having to shift from side to side continuously. Yeah, and I think that's where a couple of the goals have come from, especially that um, Rees second one was. It was just a little bit. They were just a little bit too slow to shuffle because of how much we're going side to side. Um, but there again, that chance we just had was re this time pinned the centre back, rolled her, and ran onto the ball and showed the pace. And unlucky not to score. Cool, calm, composed defending there from Siobhan Walsh and Hannah Power. Played out. Broadhurst, can she chase down the head as she can? The touch is a little heavy, good pressure, but I'll run to Charlotte Hastings. Just a reminder that uh, whilst Cardiff City don't have another home game for a couple of weeks, I think Noah said it's Cup against Britain Ferry on the weekend. Next Wednesday, they are at King Coy. They are at Cardiff Met, and if you saw Sunday's game, it was fascinating, it was frantic, but also a lot of good football, so I'm certainly going to pop up to that, and I would encourage anyone else to take a Wednesday trip to the King Coy campus next week. Yeah, definitely will be a really, really tough game. Um, you know, we won 3-1 on Sunday, but when you play against a team like Met, it could go either way. You always know that. They have the quality to score goals and you know and 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 play really well so we know that from last season i think we played them five times in the end and we won a couple they won a couple so could go either way against a team like matt now talk to me about the development of lily billingham because i'm just watching it she sees the pitch so well compared to to last season and maybe i saw her just play wider last year i'm not sure but obviously you know you grow up you mature she's seeing the pitch so well yeah we signed her uh, probably a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, for the under-19s team. Uh, and we signed her as a winger. Uh, she was a left winger. I think we tried her on both wings. Um, and she was, you know, playing really well. And we, me and Scott were working with the under-19s at the time. And we were saying to Ian, you've got to try her. You've got to try her. Um, and she kept, kept working, kept working. Um, trained with the first team a couple of times. And Ian was then like, yeah, she's good. She's really good. And last season then decided, I think it was through an injury, I think it was when Kath, yeah it was, it was when Kath got injured, when Kath did her ACL, decided to try, or is this a chance? There's Green, Green, moves the ball forward, lovely give and go, Green with the chance again, will come to Price, Price checks in field, now checks out, Cardiff will manipulate the ball and move it to the right hand side, power. A little bit of room to go into. Doesn't want to just put a ball into the box. Just wants to go short and draw people out if they can. But Price will put the ball into the box. And oh. Oh, was thinking, was thinking. What a way that would have been oh, to complete the wow. hat-trick. Um, but yeah, going back to Lily, I think we had a, a staff meeting about who do we put in that centre mid spot. It was such an important position. And we tried in training. I was, I was with the first team at that point and... We tried a couple of players in there. Lily was one of those, and we decided to go for Lily for that weekend, and <laughs> she never left centre mid. She's absolutely smashing it. She is. Um, last season, it's, there's a progression this season, you can see. She, the last season, obviously, grew and grew and grew. Scored the goal in the cup final against Met as well. Um, but this season, you can see she's constantly scanning the pitch, constantly wants to battle. Um, and it's, it's, it is really good to see. Uh, yeah, it's it's her vision and her awareness of what's going on around her that really stands out, and that goes for a number of these Cardiff City players. As that's a good tackle good in the middle of the park by number seven Kerry Hudson. Although the ball will come back the Bluebirds' way, is Holly Smith tries a little nutmeg, gets the ball back, puts a dangerous whip ball into the box. Broadhurst is there. Goalkeeper does well enough in the end. I don't think Broadhurst got the touch. Hastings had to be good at her near post and she turns it out for a corner kick to Cardiff City <laughs> Holly would have loved it if she scored <laughs> <laughs> we, I was laughing with her after training last week I think we were talking about a celebration she was like I'll never score Noah <laughs> <laughs> Mike was telling me on the weekend uh, no and we'll, we'll come back to it after the quarter some players are you know maybe slightly older maybe slightly more reserved but, but Holly is, is quite the character <laughs> oh she is she is yeah very very funny even on our, you know, we have 
Um, what a kick comes in. Cool. Walsh will give it back out to the corner taker, who was Watkins. Watkins will whip a ball in, and Smith, <laughs> Harley Smith again, <laughs> almost. But yeah, even on our, we have an app for you know team conversations, yep. team chats, and uh, Holly even finds the tiniest things to make <laughs> jokes out of and all sorts on the chat so yeah she is she is a character Holly Broadhurst gave that ball away uncharacteristically for her and now Abergavenny are in behind crossing opportunity from the right hand side decent ball only one to hit and Siobhan Walsh got there first Broadhurst now will attempt to link with one of her teammates Sarah Watkins I think was actually looking for an angled ball but came off her foot a little awkwardly Abergavenny just every so often show that they have an attacking threat. And Ian Derbyshire urging his team up, just maybe thinking that in the last couple of moments with the full goal lead, perhaps naturally, the team have dropped off a little bit. Wants to keep those high standards. Ball into the channel, which Power deals with well. Price should keep that in. Does, gives the ball back to Power that she'll have to head rather than control. Watkins protects that ball ever so well. Gives it to Walsh and Cardiff are back in control again. Yeah, going back to what you just said, I think, you know, we're half an hour in now. There's no 4 0 up, there's no need to constantly work hard. I think we, we might have had a bit of an adrenaline rush in the first 25 minutes. And so now we're just taking off, off the gas a little bit. And I know we all want to keep that tempo going. That's the high expectations we set. But yeah, I think. I think it's okay every now and then, especially when you don't have the ball. Just reserve your energy a little bit. Play the occasion a little bit now. Um, but you know, I know we said in we said in a team meeting that it's important that yes, it's a big occasion, but it's also another league match. And I think the way the girls have approached this is exactly that. They've they've gone for another league match. They've just seen it as go for it, league match, play the match don't get drawn up in the crowd and I think doing they've done that really really well and and we and that was something that Ian wanted to make sure was really important um, and now it's we, we've got those four, four goals I'm not saying the game's over but off the ball they can start to enjoy it a little bit yes especially on a sopping pitch as well which is going to take energy away although yeah. Cardiff City uh, if you haven't joined us on uh, our regular Sunday games move from two training sessions to three training sessions yeah. this week and looks to me during has made the world of difference and, and has given them an edge in a number of games yeah this season yeah not, this, not just this week this season we moved to three yep. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and it has yeah definitely definitely improved um, and it's where it's where we want to go as a country now yep. with our league uh, we had a you know it's, it's one of the, the, the key things that uh, we want to push through in, in Wales, not just with our club, is try and make this league more professional. And training three times is that extra step. And then it'll just hopefully keep growing and growing like that uh, from that. So last season was two times for every team, I think. And now a couple of teams have moved to three. Beautiful angle ball by Billingham to Green. Whips it across. Broadhurst can't quite get across the keeper, but... Billingham was pointing to Green exactly where she wanted her to go, where she was going to play the ball. And for a youngster learning a new position, it's great to see that confidence and maturity. Great header again by Siobhan Walsh. Just the rock that this team is built on. And I mentioned yeah. to her, her sister, Kath, as well, who's joined us on commentary, recovering from that ACL. What a player she is and will be a welcome addition when she's fit again. Can Billingham get in there? She can't. Hastings is out well. It's, it's, it's such an interesting shape because every player's had to learn something new. Yep. It's not just, you know, Dan Green and it's, it's everyone. And, and Shiv, who's played centre-back for years and years and years, has learned that in that middle role, as you said, she's that rock. And she's just got to sit in, yep. win the ball, play the passes off. I think in, you would have seen it last season. She, she does like to drive forward, but now it's about can she just be that player be that rock player and sometimes she will drive forward that Eliza from Eliza Colley goal a few weeks yes. ago she drove out of the fence played the ball through she picks her moments now and that's what she's had to learn and so 
a lot of players or everyone has had to learn, 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 learn. And, you know, Ian and Scott have done a great job at coaching that. That's a lovely this move. This is beautiful. This what could be a move. great move. Billingham, the ball forced a wide little bit. First touch out of her feet. Great recovery tackle. It's, uh, well, it should be a pass back, perhaps. Referee lets the uh, Abergavenny team off on that occasion. But it's Fionn Simmons who got back and made an excellent tackle. But almost in it commentator shouldn't say this a shame because that was such a lovely move it would have been a picture perfect goal yeah really really nice move shame for Lily as well um, I know she doesn't pop up with many goals Lily but it's all the other work that she does is vital to the team some really good football being played around about nine minutes remaining of this first half I think the over 5,000 crowd have been pretty entertained so far four goals for the Bluebirds although Abergavenny have grown into the game Credit to them. Heads haven't dropped. They're pressing now on the edge of the box, although Billingham makes a tackle. Broadhurst gets in there, tries to find Poole, but that was a good read by Bennett, who steps forward. Broadhurst gets back goal side, catches I think a stud on the top of the boot there. A little bit painful. Referee says play on. There was no foul, nothing malicious there. Straight ball into the box. Bennett couldn't find the angle. That's going to go through to Karen Chamberlain. Yeah, I think I'd, I've just realised that the number eight for Abergavenny, Katie Williams, was also a Welsh international. So it's not just us with Welsh internationals on the pitch. You've got Katie Williams as well for Abergavenny. And she's, well, I know her as, as a centre-back, but she can play that midf midfield role as well. I've, I know she can, you know, when I've spoken to her in the past, she can play centre-back, she can mm -hmm. play uh, in midfield. And that's where she's playing today in midfield. So you can see that they set up defensively in midfield I think it's just as we were mentioning earlier it's just that that shape maybe can they just tweak it to stop us from playing through so much and actually it looks like they have Katie's now in the middle of that midfield three yes and then they push up as Dan B goes yeah yeah they've activated a little bit more of aggressive press to try and keep Cardiff or put it pressure on Cardiff in their own half, although Cardiff have played round the press well, and that ball's going to drop ball. into Oakley Oakley, can she protect the ball? She does good covering again from Caitlin Davis who just gets herself back goal side very well she does, she does, and a good tackle fantastic as well. tackle, that's excellent work by Caitlin yeah. Davis a couple of really good recovery runs from her and, and that one, really good positioning got herself goal side well done good challenge there Aaron Watkins just Doing what Sarah Watkins does. Great uh, block tackle there and allows Poole to go off and chase. Only one layer of press, though, from Cardiff. Maybe just recovering behind the ball. So Abergavenny have been able to play out. That's uh, nice. Bennett tries to play it forward. Power's there. Price can't bring that under control. Bennett again plays it forward. Just out of the reach of Murphy. Power turns away well and will give it back to Siobhan Walsh. Well, should ball into the feet of Poole. Poole, well, thought it protected it, but Bennett wouldn't give up on that. The number five has had a good few minutes. As Bull uh, feeds it back to goalkeeper Hastings. Billingham, good press again. But credit to Abergavenny, you know, and, I, and I, I mean this not in a patronising way, but in a, I'm really impressed. 4-0 down, you could shut up shop and game over. Their heads haven't dropped at all. No, and they've, they've held on to the ball really well. I was, I was just about to say the same thing. I think they've, they've worked out that, that little bit in midfield, how to stay a little bit more solid. And I think now, yeah, exactly, not in a patronising way. They've, they've switched up how they're playing. They've gone a bit more solid. And uh, not conceded. I, I think we scored our fourth goal after 19 minutes, something yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, really good. Broadhurst tries to find Poole. But again, Abigail just doing a far better job of clogging that middle of the park. And those channel runs aren't necessarily on. Watkins, that'll be a foul as she goes into that tackle. Ball was just nicked away from her by Boyd. And that'll be a free kick to Abergavenny midway inside. Or well, maybe not even that, but uh, advancing into the Cardiff City half. Rain continues to fall. It's a horrible night in the capital, but it's not diminishing any of the enthusiasm here. We continue to hear noise. We're in the gantry, the other side of the pitch, to so the main 
body of fans at Cardiff City Stadium tonight in the Ninian stand. But uh, from minute one to minute 40 right now, no let up in noise whatsoever. Great to, yeah, great to see, great to hear. Is that handball on Billingham? It is. Ball bounced up on her, so it'll be another free kick to Abergavenny in a slightly more advanced position. Maybe a chance to put the ball into the box and throw some bodies forward. I tell you, I've heard quieter atmospheres when there's been 20,000 people in here, so credit <laughs> to the crowd. I know, I, I keep taking my headphones <laughs> off to try... <laughs> like, I'm trying to work out, you know... <laughs> Someone's like, you know, when COVID was on, you had the fan noise. Oh, oh. Murphy has to tip that onto the bar. It was, uh, sorry, Murphy with a strike. Chamberlain has to tip that onto the bar. And you can see Murphy now lining see that up. Or can we find the switch? Oh, Poole is in acres if Oakley can see her, but she is being angled off. That's decent defending. She couldn't find the release ball to Poole. Here's Green, a jinky little run, but will lose the ball to probably the best player of the yeah, first half for Abergavenny, Caitlin Davis, and gets in there again with a little bit of a havoc clearance, but very good defending by the Abergavenny number three. Oakley just couldn't quite see or, or find a way to get that, that ball through to Poole. Yeah, I think she she realised a little bit too late, I think. Um, but just want to you just want her to back herself here eh? yeah go go for if you don't see the pass use your pace get in behind great read of that play from holly smith headers the ball back into midfield to broadhurst who gives it to green who's always an option on the left hand side i can see her fellow wing back price making room to the box but Poole might have matters of her own in hand she uh, goes to ground injured Got knocked in the small of her back, maybe just knocked off balance, and as a result, the shot goes over the bar. But she's just she's a little bit more streetwise there. She's luring defenders into the tackle, and on this surface, this greasy surface, yeah. she's just allowing the ball to run on. Yeah, I think, well, when we were down doing the warm-up, I was down on the pitch with them, and we, we spoke about... Well, firstly, I was saying about the, the pitch is sticky. You've got to fish your passes in. But also, that also means that even though it's sticky tackles you, you're going to be flying everywhere yeah and uh yeah phoebe smart enough to know how to exactly what you said lure defenders in and sell them that way oakley lays it back to pool pool is after this third goal she hits the bar on this occasion so unfortunate her and oakley linking up well pool jinking one way then back onto her left foot hits the bar I should just say we saw a replay a moment ago of that Abergavenny chance they hit the bar also yeah. excellent free kick from Alana Murphy but uh, Phoebe Poole's on a mission to get that hat trick she is I think if she hasn't scored two she slips down through there <laughs> never criticise a goal scorer for taking a oh, shot off absolutely not not when you score that many goals it's fine so the woodwork has been hit at both ends in the last couple of minutes nice ball from Murphy into the feet of Atkins and that's well that's a sandwich a <laughs> couple of heavy tackles there on a wet pitch Cardiff get the ball back sure, I thought Eliza Atkins had done really well there and then Dan <laughs> comes flying in but she actually turned the defender I think it was Holly really well and it looked like she was away yeah, Atkins and, and Murphy as Noah said earlier in the half do give Abergavenny something if they can get the ball in the final third and some possession and they're making life a little bit more difficult for Cardiff in the middle of the park. Well, that's a lovely turn from Billingham. Sets Oakley away. Oakley now will drive towards the box. Gives it to Poole. Is this the moment for Phoebe Poole? No, because it's great covering defending from Simmons. Here's Price. Price with the shot. Just wide. Referee blows the half-time whistle. We have been thoroughly entertained here at Cardiff City Stadium. It almost finished with a goal, but it started with four. Inside the first 20 minutes, two apiece for the striking pair. Uh, two for Phoebe Poole, two for Rion Oakley. And we thought it was going to be an occasion, Noah, as we'll start to see some of the highlights. We wanted it to be an occasion. You can't ask for more than those first 20 minutes. Oh, no, you can't. You can't at all. I said after the fourth goal, I said, right, talk about rising to the occasion. And I mean, in front of all the fans, I said about five minutes ago, I, I keep having to take my headphones off to check that it's actually happening. Um, and yeah, really, really good performance so far. Um, and 
Ian and Scott uh, they'll just be so proud of how well we're playing so far I, I, exactly that is exactly what Ian and Ian would have wanted and what he would have said in the team talk before the game I just a uh, final question for you so Cardiff they scored the first goal the four goals wing backs making the pitch big allowing runners third man runs as you said uh, uh, Rian Oakley Phoebe Poole Dan Broadhurst on a number of occasions so well they, they created four goals that way but then credit to Abergavenny they, they recognised that albeit they conceded four goals but they shut up shop a little bit and made it more congested, harder to kind of affect those areas in the middle of the park. Yeah, I think we spoke about, you know, the development of the women's game earlier and we and we said, and, and, and it's about coaches as well coming in and, and Josh Anderson, who's, who's Abergavenny's coach, has clearly spotted about the midfield being a little bit overrun and, and shoring things up a little bit in there. And... You know, fair play to Abergavenny. They they have kept things solid towards the end of the half and and made it harder for us to play. I, I think we still could have scored a couple of goals, but they have made it harder for us to play. We haven't had those clear cut chances like we created in the first 20 minutes, and that's all credit to them. And, and just final word: we've mentioned it all half. We'll continue to mention it on what is the, the rain is pelting down. It's a horrible night. You want to be on your sofa. You want to be watching TV with a cup of tea in hand. 5,000 people aren't. They're here at Cardiff City Stadium and they're enjoying every moment. I know, and and I, I, I couldn't believe the traffic driving in. <laughs> I, I was supposed to get here a little bit earlier 